Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is time yet again to solve another puzzle. And today's puzzle is the only level six Hanayama puzzle that I have not yet done. And that puzzle is the chain puzzle. Now being a level six means that is a level six out of a possible six. So the puzzles don't get harder than this one. Previous level sixes that I've done have taken be three hours to get it apart and three hours to put it back together. So today could be an extremely long day. As always though, we are gonna attempt to disassemble the three pieces that make up that chain puzzle. Then we're gonna attempt to reassemble them back into their original position. And then once we've done that, or rather if we do that, then we will place it on our leaderboard. Easiest puzzle down here, hardest puzzle up here and going left to right, bottom to top, everything in between. So let's see if we can get this chain puzzle solved. Okay, so here is the chain puzzle. And at first thoughts, as with quite a lot or an unusual amount of puzzles or the Hanayama puzzle that I've done, I'm always a little bit surprised at the size. In this sense, I expected this the chain puzzle to be bigger than it is. Initially, as we got out of the box, I've noticed that we are very nicely labeled, or very nicely conven or conveniently labeled even. One dot in there, two dots in there, three dots in there. So, we're aiming, well, if we manage to get it apart, we're aiming to get back to this position. Three, two, and one. And I'm just gonna check whether the two being closest to the one side, no it doesn't, I was gonna say whether that makes a difference, but clearly not, because we can just swap it straight over. So obviously we're aiming one, two in the middle, and three on the opposite side to one. So that's where we need to get back to, but first of all we need to somehow separate them. And another thing that we can notice is, obviously each piece is very slightly different, so. On this number one piece, we've got a little bit of a cut out in there. And a slightly different shape looking here when we compare it. Oh, it's the same as the, the number two piece. But looking on this number three piece, we've got a big groove in here. You can see a little bit easier in that position. It's different, obviously, to the other pieces. But on the number two and three piece, there is no similar groove to that one there. Now my assumption is that we have to swap these pieces around. So obviously it's one, two, three at the middle, at the minute, sorry. But I imagine that it's not going to stay like that. Or we're gonna run into a few different orders before we actually manage to get this puzzle apart. So first off I'm trying to see what fits in that groove nicely and at the minute of what looks like these pieces in here fit perfectly. But what does that allow us to do? So if we have a quick look at the box, I almost forgot about this. The three pieces can be separated and then joined again in their original, uh, original form. What's special about this puzzle is that it can be solved three different ways depending on which of the three pieces is chosen as the middle piece. That's interesting. Solving this puzzle requires an especially subtle kind of working of the pieces, the kind that often leaves the victim, victim, that's an excellent description, struggling in frustration. Keeping in mind it's chain-like behavior and using your intuition to your advantage is the best way to attack this. Designed by Oscar van de Vente, who is a prolific Hanayama designer from, based on memory, we've got quite a few Oscar puzzles. We didn't get much from that, from reading that, other than there's a few different ways of solving it, but that usually means there's, it's always the same moves, but like a different order when it, well, in, on previous puzzles anyway, when, when we've read something similar to that. It's always nice to get a feel for how the puzzle moves, but this is 
a lot more loose than I expected it to be. And what I'm thinking at the minute is that this groove in here is probably used to get it out of the way so that we can do a different sort of move with the other two pieces. And I have a suspicion that that other sort of move has to do with laying these sort of face down on each other, if that makes sense. So I twist in so we can almost get it there. So laying them so that I'll lay them so that they are square on to each other. Now I'm thinking that we can maybe Yeah, there we go. So I think we can connect in here the number one piece and the number three piece. Or at least this move seems like a, a good position to be in anyway. These things fit, well, seemingly fit together nicely. And here we're using the groove in the number three piece to keep the second piece out of the way. And we can connect that number one piece and number two piece in there. We don't seem to be having much success, but this is the only position I've found where things sort of fit together. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time trying to figure out a different position from here. So uh, yeah, with that bit not being in that gap now, that would That would mean that it doesn't matter as to whether which side that piece is on. I'm working my way around to something, but I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm working my way around to. And now we've got the number one and the number two piece opposite each other. And can we now arrange the number three piece so that we can do a similar move that got us to this all three pieces entangled position. My only concern right now is that there might be, we got here somehow, or in a way that I think there might be a lot of other different ways of also getting here, if that makes sense. I've been trying to work so that we can get two pieces opposite each other and do a similar move to what we did with the number one and the number three piece to entangle them all like they are now or where they're all intertwined as opposed to a chain position so it would make sense if it was number one and number three that got us to here for it to be not number one and number three together and for it to be number two and number one or number two and number three that then separate next or maybe not separate but sort of get us to the next stage ah uh, this is starting to get a little bit frustrating because there's always something in the way. You think you see something, ah, oh, well, this might fit across here. And then you work your way towards it and it doesn't fit there. Because the other piece always gets in the way. I'm sure I need to figure out a way to get something either in here or on here that will get it out of the way so that we can progress to the next stage or possibly even separate one. I doubt it's going to be separating one, but at least make some progress that's tangible in some way. Oh, yes. So we've now swapped the order. So number one is in the middle. 
and number two is on the edge. I need to somehow memorize that, so... And that must be good. That must be... Progress. That's easy to do as well. I can't believe I wasn't in that position earlier. I feel like I went around those pieces loads. So if that's also the only moves, or the only type of move that we can do, then I would suspect that we have to go back together, sort of the other way around. Now with this new order, now we've got the two pieces that have different grooves in it, one in there on the one, and then one in here on the three. They're now adjacent to each other without the number two getting in the way. So is there a way we can now line up those two pieces? and then somehow separate them. There seems to be a lot of different possible ways to cross over, which is possibly what it means when it says that it can be solved three different ways. So I feel like if the number three bit was in the middle, and I could get one or two into this position, then I feel like you could then separate, or, yeah, which would have to then be, uh, it could be number one or number two actually. I feel like if I was in the other way around where the number three was in the middle, I could get a piece into that position and then with the other piece around here, somehow turn the other piece off and separate from there. But if that is right, then it means I have to go back, so here, so that we then, right, yeah, good. So that worked how I wanted it to work. So we've now got the number three as the middle piece, which then means, I think, if I get that piece out of the way there. I'm not sure. So we haven't used that groove yet. It's not used in any of the moves that we do so far. Well, essentially we've only found one move. We've, we've spent like an hour discovering one way that this puzzle moves. And we, so we haven't discovered what that groove in there is used for. And these things fit in it nice and conveniently. Like there, sort of. Not in this position, but you can see how sort of this beak, if you like, would fit in there almost perfectly. But, yeah, we've just, we've just not found where it's used for yet. Whether it is one of those bits or whether, whether something else also fits in there. I'm gonna try and go back to that spot that, where I thought we could. No, no, not that way. I want the number three bit in the middle. I feel like that gap being in the middle is, is a good thing. Do those two fit? Do those two bits fit together somehow? I feel like if it was on the other way, that would sit in there. Oh, I feel like I'm missing something very obvious. Is it possible? It surely is possible. That must be how it solves. How do I flip that bit around? There must be a different way of coming back out into this position. So let's try and find it. Oh, yes. So we did that by pretty much going back to the start. And I've done it a few times where, yeah, oh wait, wait now. Let me talk through this first, how I got to it, because I'm, I'm sure that I've solved it now. But how we did that was we sort of went back to that original one, two, three chain position. And because there's sort of like two moves, I'm fairly sure I can get back to here from here. So I'm, I'm not worried about I'm not worried too much uh, about losing where I am. So obviously here we came across this position and we came out through here. But what we can then do is just flip it all the way around and sort of do the same move in reverse. 
to, so to flip that piece all the way around, I went back to the original one, two, three chain position, the, the proper original position, did that move, but so I just flipped it around, well, I guess it's 180 degrees, and then came back to, I'm too excited now, I can't, I can't move them properly. And then came back to this position here, come on. And, wouldn't you know it? Oh, what have I done here? Oh, I've got excited. I've lost the position there, and then that should be that position there. So that sits. Those two grooves sit in there, and then that should give them room for number two to separate from number three. Put that in the middle. And then these two pieces should separate in there, and then we've got number, oh, I see here, I'm hoping that it doesn't matter which order they actually go back together in, because if that is the case, I am probably going to forget. One and three together, and then two and three together, and then two and the rest of them together. Woo! That took, oh, that's the first one that's taken us over an hour for a, for a very long time. And I'm very happy that we figured it out gradually. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, there's not actually that many different moves. There's, it's just changing the orientation or changing the order of the chain so that this groove in here and this groove in here match up and then gives us the space to separate that second piece. Now, how it, when it talks about different, Oh, three different ways of, of solving this puzzle. I'm not sure how that works. Maybe there's three different ways of getting into that same position, but there's no question that it has to be those last few moves to separate it. There's, there's definitely no other ways around it. Or to get, yeah, so maybe there's different ways to get to those last two moves rather than different ending solutions, if that makes sense. Anyway, we've babbled on enough. We've solved the puzzle, or we've separated the chain puzzle. Now, time to put it back together. So we will waste no time in attempting to put it back together so that we've got the best chance of remembering which bits went together. Oh yeah, which bits went where. So then we have to assemble that position in there. And I'm hoping it is as simple as that, or as quick as that. We've got one, two, and three in there. Let me just double check that that is what we've got on the box. So we can get the exact same position as the box because I've made this mistake before in thinking I'd solved it, I'll get it back to its original position, when it wasn't actually the original position. I think this bit needs to be on this side of it. Give me a couple of minutes, wait, let me see if I can figure this out. Right, we've almost got it. So we've got number one and number two in the right position there. But number three is backwards. Oh. And finally, that is the original chain puzzle position. Whew. There we go. So there we go. We have now solved every single level six Hanayama puzzle. As of right now, anyway, I'm sure they'll bring out more level six puzzles in the future. That was probably as hard as I expected to get it apart in the first place. I was very happy that I sort of figured out all the steps as we were doing it and, and well I guess luckily it found it so easy to then go from the start position 
or an orientation of the start position to a fully separated position relatively quickly. In, in a sense, it's sort of just one... It's sort of just four moves, really, before you can get it separated. The hard part in putting it back together, which we discovered the hard way, is the orientation of how you initially put the three pieces back together. And then I think as well the route back through. So as you saw, there's sort of two ways to connect the same pieces, but there's only, I assume, one way to get the right orientation or the right exact position for the starting position, as we can see on the box. And as I said, I've, I've made the mistake before of thinking I've reassembled a puzzle. It was the it was the rotor puzzle that I did. Yeah, didn't fully reassemble it, but didn't realise at the same time. I reassembled it, looked at the box, compared them very or too quickly. Thought, yeah, that's right. Turns out it wasn't right. So this is the second time I've done that, or almost done that, but this time, luckily, I realised. But then had to go back and then to the start again about three or four times before I got the orientation of all the three pieces in the right position. And to be honest, the, the final way of getting it back into that, into its original position was, was just potluck. <laughs> I, I think I must have tried every possible orientation and obviously eventually you're going to get there at some point. In terms of time, taking it apart took yeah, just over an hour, hour five, hour ten minutes around that time. And then in total, with all the different orientations of putting it back together, that took about 10 minutes. So relatively quick for putting a level 6 puzzle back together. So now that we have solved it, we've disassembled it, we've reassembled it, now it's time to place it on the leaderboard. And we've just talked about the hourglass and the vortex puzzle. We're nowhere near that level of difficulty with the chain puzzle. They are all level 6s, as is the, the quartet in third position. But the chain puzzle is nowhere near as hard as those three. So the, their, their top three spots are secure. And if we work our way down, we've got the UFO, the Enigma, and the Equa puzzle next. We're also not harder than any of those, so we're, we're looking much further down than those. Then we've got the Trinity, the Rota, which I talked about as the newest level six Hanayama. We're not harder than those. Then we've got, what's this one called? The Radix. We're not harder than the Radix either. The Cylinder. The Cylinder, we're also not harder than. You can go wrong with the Cylinder and end up stuck for a long time, as I did. So we're not harder than the Cylinder. The Padlock was the first ever Hanayama puzzle, or the first of all these Hanayama puzzles that I ever did. Uh, that's also an extremely difficult one that took a couple of hours to take apart and put back together as well so then we're not on the top row we are then looking at the second row where we've got the u and u and the uh h and h puzzle now for definite we are harder than the h and h puzzle it's definitely harder than that the question is are we easier or harder than the U and U? Now we solved the U and U relatively recently, a couple of months ago. Now part of me doesn't want one of the old style boxes to go on the uh, the top row, but the U and U only solves because of very very small differences or slight differences in what you think is the same pieces. If that makes sense, the chain puzzle is three separate different pieces but they're not trying to trick you they are obviously different whereas the u and u is sort of trying to hide the differences for it from you because of how slight they are for those reasons plus given how much i now understand the chain puzzle the u and u is gonna well not stay above but the chain puzzle is gonna go just below the u and u puzzle and just above the level five H and H puzzle. And that means we have now attempted 48 Hanayama puzzles. We have now solved 48 Hanayama puzzles. And currently this is my ranking of easiest to hardest puzzles of all those 48. And that is us done for the day. We have disassembled the chain. We have put it back together 
and then we've placed it on the leaderboard. And if you agree or disagree with that ranking, with my placing on the leaderboard, or if you have any thoughts on the chain puzzle yourself, then comment below. I will get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. And if you want to see me solve any of these other Hanayama puzzles and then the step-by-step -step solutions to each and every one of them, we'll be doing the chain one in a couple of weeks, then you should click my face here to subscribe and I will see you next time. Peace!